I see this now as a moral problem, not just an accounting problem. This is an ethical and moral problem. Okay, now, uh, look at this chart, all right? What you got here is the national debt in trillions, okay? 20 trillion was last year, 21 trillion at the end of the fiscal year, by the way, for America is September 30th, and we do get a set of books. We, we, we have a set of books, and we do get an accounting. It's the Government Accounting Office, now it's called the Government Accountability Office. These numbers are not showing your body's numbers. This is the Congressional Budget Office, an independent agency, apart from the government. It's funded by the government, but this is not the Budget Committee, which is subject to politics. This is an independent. It just came out with their interpretation of the results of operations for the last fiscal year. What was that? September 30th, 19, uh, excuse me, 2017. Now, if we don't change anything, you are screwed. Because I'm going to show you a punch card. Now, by the way, the green happens to be the gross domestic product of the United States of America. What is that? That's the sum total economically of all goods and services. Look how it is being surpassed by the debt. So 33 trillion on Mickey Mouse basis, but still it's passing 29 trillion dollars in, in, in gross domestic product, right? That's the green. Go to the pie chart. Oh great. Now this is the pie chart that I prepared to show you in 2017, because we know what the actual numbers are. Okay? Look at the blue. What's blue? Mandatory spending. What's mandatory? Social Security, Medicare, federal pensions. You can't, unless you have a law in Congress to change that, that's it. Nobody wants to change it. So, as a result, look at what the orange is. That's all that Congress deals with today. That 30% is called discretionary spending. Non-defense, what, what is it? Education, transportation, agriculture, veterans benefits, science, space, tech, homeland security. That's half. What's the other half? Defense. So half of the 30% is defense. Very important. But look at interest on the national debt. $263 billion. And it's 7%. That's not 7% interest getting paid on the Treasury bill, which is the debt we're talking about. The bills that are sold to the American public and to China, right? That's seven percent of the three point nine round numbers, four trillion dollars. Multiply it. Seven percent, then you got the two sixty three. Go to the next part, John. Now, hold on to your seats. This is America ten years from now. See, no one has the nerve to do this. I gotta do this. And and I'm gonna bring this out nationally to shock America into reality. Look, you see the blue change? Not much. Why? Because there's been no attempt at entitlement reform. But look at interest. With the 13 percent, 915 billion. You might say to yourself, how did we go from 260 billion to 915? What's at work here? Deficits every year, and now we're going back to trillion dollar deficits annually. If you look at the difference, you'll see that. You go back, yeah, and you'll see that as I show you the next chart, that we're going to have years now where we're going to be short every year a trillion dollars. What happens to it? It gets added to the debt. But guess what else is happening? The interest rates are going up. We had a free ride here. The Federal Reserve, in order to keep the economy going, had quantitative easing. They reduced the interest rates practically to zero for bank borrowing. And for the prime rate, I think it was like 2 or 3%. Now it's going up. So that you got two things going. Actually, you got three things. Because we dumbed down the treasury bills in order to save money on interest, we took the long-term treasury bills and made them short-term. Which means now that we roll over the debt, we're going to be subject immediately to the higher interest rates. So you got three things pushing the dollar from 263 to 915, and all of a sudden it's 13 percent. Now where's that 13 percent coming from? And if you look at the honor, it's going down from 30 to 23 percent. That's the Fed. Homeland Security, education, your standard of living. When is America going to wake up? When are these politicians going to decide we've got to do something right for the next generation? But they're not worried about that. They're worried about their election and their pension. And this is the problem we have, conflict of interest. We're currying favor with today's voters. Remember that little chart I had before? 
Currying favor with today's voters at the expense of tomorrow's taxpayers. That's you. That's the ultimate conflict. That's the immorality I just had. Now, look at this chart. Here's your actual 263. See it at the top? That's the actual interest. What is the fence side of it? Well, if you saw the chart, it's 590 billion. 263 to 590. Look what happens in 10 years. These are not my numbers. Look what happens to interest. 950 short, right? You saw the chart before? 915. But look what you get the fence side of it. Only goes up to 769. So interest is now squeezing out the Fed. Where's the money coming from? You know, we gotta borrow it. Now you gotta borrow to pay the interest besides. Okay, bottom line. I think in your case, I have to define it as citizenship. What is it that we want as good citizens? When you become parents, and so it talks about society. Thomas Paine said it well. Read his crisis papers in the common sense. And you'll see how he defined society versus government. You know what he said about government? It's there to protect us against other people. It's there to protect, you know, it's, it's something that monitors the vices of people. But he said society is a patron. Society is good. It's government that can be bad. And what he said was that we need to be good citizens. And what I'm saying here is, if I'm a good father, what am I looking for? I'm looking to give my children a head start in life, help them paying off the national debt, sometimes to maybe move them into our houses if they need it. We don't add more debt to them. So you got to look at government. To be a good citizen and, 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 and to say the government's good, we got to think about it in those terms. Why should government be putting a burden on the future of America? You, because you're not speaking loud enough. First of all, many of you can't vote. Second of all, you don't know how to speak loud yet. I'm giving you 60 years worth of experience, me, right, running around. So don't worry that you haven't done it yet. But I'm just trying to put a seat in your mind that maybe public service will be good. And one day, you, you, you would want to become a sculptor on that. Now, thank you pretty much. And there it is. Now, look at that. That's how it book. I, my logo, I took a congressman's voting card, same size as a credit card, and I called it in this book, you'll see it, chapter one, the most expensive credit card in the world. It's a congressman's voting card. There's a computer at the end of the row of seats, you put it in, same size as a credit card, what are you doing? You're raising the national debt. The money's not there. So it is the most expensive credit card in the world. And basically, that's what that says. And what does it, this credit card say? Represent credit line unlimited, payment date never, bill to future generations. That's you. Thank you. Thank you.